Fatalo Fati Lupa Ia Manima Malu Mum Fayona Mai Mua Mai Le Nepo Kalame Linea Fiapi Ya Ole Ngoa Le Nepo Kalame Ole Talanoa Sao Ya Malo Ngoa O Fui Ava Ilili Ala Ilima Pakalamalahiatu Welcome to the Talanoa Sao My name is Ali Tiki Lee Talo Falaba and my name is Liao Tilsley Ko Tamao Tamaunga Ko Te Awaroa Maru Te Awa Ko Okeanga Me A Hamo nga tangata, ko a ya fiti no hamo nga iwi, ko Malte Toro de Hapu, ko Piki Te Aroha Te Marae, ko Jack Junior Nelson Tokuno, o era tēnā tātou kato. Kia ora, kia ora. Alright, so welcome to Tāna Noa Sao. We are on at the, and we are here for you to have some strong discussions. And first, as we always do, we would love to start with some rotu. So we'll ask for Pui Amai to send us off. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to praise and glorify your wonderful name this evening. Uh, Lord, we just want to lift you up and praise your wonderful uh, kindness towards us. As uh, we journey throughout this life, we know, Lord, that we can do nothing without you, but with you, we can do all things. So as we begin this program, Lord, we ask for your spirit to just fellowship with us and we ask father god that you anoint each and every one of us especially our special guest yaki and i ask father god that you just uh watch over this program and speak to all of our our audience who are listening right now lord that they can they can hear the message that we're giving up in your son's holy and mighty name we pray amen, amen. 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 So this is Jack Nielsen, um, as you said, and he is one of the co-hosts uh, for um, Native Overstairs, yeah, yep. uh, which we have been on actually. <laughs> we had some amazing awesome. conversations. Awesome. <laughs> very good, very straightforward, very to the point. And so we've asked uh, Jack to come along and to speak with us today. Uh, we have some very strong uh, topics to discuss today, which I think would be suit really well with you being here. So mm. thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Jack. Mm. Yeah, so uh, actually, I want to know, so Jack, uh, would you mind just giving a very brief about yourself, uh, just yeah. so that our people out there sort of know uh, who you are, where you're from, sure. uh, and then, then we do have some awesome questions, some questions. to get into. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's, it's a real... Uh, Blessing to, to be on the show. Um, I have been watching all your episodes and uh, I'm a very big fan. Uh, so <laughs> well, we got one. On. <laughs> There's at least one. Um, I guess a bit about myself. Um, I was born and bred here in Auckland. Um, I come from a Samoan Danish family so mm. on one side and then a Māori Scottish family on the other. Mm. So I'm a bit of a fruit salad, probably like yourself, <laughs> and like your kids. And um, I guess in terms of uh, what I do these days, I mean, I do come from a background, sorry, in education mm. and a bit of a firm of action program, so maybe we can get into that a bit awesome. later. Awesome. Yes. Uh, and a bit of a background in rugby and fitness. Mm. Mm. Uh, and these days, uh, as Val mentioned, um, we have a podcast, Native Overstayers, uh, which I do with my cousin. So it definitely keeps us busy and keeps us sort of abreast of what's happening out there in the world. Mm. Mm. So is that on YouTube? So we can... Yeah, so the podcast uh, is uh, off, run off my cousin's uh, Facebook page, sure. Generic Productions. Um, we find when we do put it on YouTube, some of the content that we cover, sometimes, you know, it can, can be suppressed a bit or, or yeah. sort of struck off. So we're very mindful with that. Uh, but definitely um, Facebook is our main um, source of getting the podcast out there. And we also use um, uh, Spotify and iTunes and Apple Podcasts sure. uh, to get it out on the audience. Can you just please repeat that? Facebook, what, what is the Facebook page? So the Facebook page is, it's under Denrick Productions. Denrick. Denrick, Denrick oh, yeah. Productions. Uh, a, maybe we could just put that as yeah, a link in, um, when, we, when we put this on our Facebook page. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll put it on there for you. All good. All yeah, good. sounds good. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, now, I was really interested because, I, you know, some of us, myself uh, included, you know, we look at some of the crimes that have been happening, and I have a bit of an issue with um, some of the cultural reports being oh, yes. used to discount sentences. Yep. And I know that if someone is, you know, the Balangi or if they're Asian, you know, they don't get 
they generally don't get it, but I don't know. I don't know mm. for sure. You'll so these are some oh, these are right. some questions that I wanted yeah. to ask you because I know uh, because Jack is actually I believe a cultural report writer. Section twenty seven. Section twenty seven. I have an Could issue you... with the word culture as well. So, so that's, oh that's great, a, okay. that's a so bit more. Good. Can you just go, uh, yes, mm. what is that? And and even that word about culture report, sure. let us know what that's about. So I guess, again, um, a Section 27 report uh, is based on the 2002 Sentencing Act. Section 27 of that Act allows either a report or a speaker or cultural speaker that can come to uh, an offender's sentencing to basically give the judge a bit more information or they can have the report prepared and then go to the judge before the sentencing so they can then make I guess the best decision in terms mm. of that particular sentence. Mm. Um, now funny that you mentioned that um, maybe Balangi people and, and saying that well, Asian people aren't don't get them. I'd probably say 20% of wow. the clients that I have uh, Balangi mm. or Asian. Yeah. So these particular reports, Section 27 reports, are open to anyone as per the legislation. Um, they are used mainly by Māori and Pasifika, and I guess that's where um, a lot of the a lot of the issues can arise. Um, I guess the big thing for, the reason I guess my sister and I got onto these reports, my sister's actually a family lawyer, mm. okay. and so um, she started writing these reports while she was practising as a lawyer. She actually writes, there's the criminal um, section 27 reports, which I, I, I basically do, and she also does the family um, mm. section 27 reports. So there's actually two kinds, well, that we write at least. Mm. Um, and again, her experience as a lawyer um, and sort of having an understanding of the family court can help in regard to writing the family court um, reports. I myself, I write the criminal. What I guess what the overall uh, thing with our, again, our um, consultancy is that it really is based on, it's more of a ministry for us. Mm -hmm. um, if we think about what Jesus said in Matthew 25, he said, what you do for the least in the kingdom, mm -hmm. basically the most vulnerable people in society, yeah. you do for him. Now, when I read that, or when I understand that, obviously for us, um, the unborn yes. are the yeah. most vulnerable. That's yes. vulnerable pro-life for yes. us. After that, you then have babies, children, and teenagers. Right. Jesus also tells us to go and visit people while they're in prison. Mm. So again, for us, that's mm. that's basically it's sort of the cornerstone why we do our um, our report writing. I know that there have been a, a number of cases of late that have um, you know come out where I think there was a mother uh, up north um, that basically mm. killed her baby, mm. and um, I believe she got home detention. She did for she 10 did. months. 10 months, right? So, yeah. you know, from from basically um, someone that could be charged with murder to then get 10 months home detention, I guess without sort of having read the particular report or seen what other issues were underlying there, I can't particularly comment. But what I will say about this is that the offenders that we sit down with, and you've, you've said it before as well, they will often come from a broken home. Mm. They will be subjected to family violence, physical violence, sexual abuse. They will be exposed to drugs and alcohol at an early age. Mm -hmm. um, they are probably involved with gang culture. Mm. And if we're talking about Māori and Pasifika, we all know sort of the statistics and, and around Māori gangs and even for Pasifika. And I'll probably say for Pasifika more recently with the 501 deportees. Mm. That's yes. what I found a lot of them that sort of gone there. When you have, I guess... The reports about trying to find, the term they use is a causal nexus or a link between what happens to you as a baby or as a child mm. or as a teenager to sort of help explain why you've offended or why you are facing those particular charges. Because the report themselves, they're, they're focused on the particular charges an offender is facing at the time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm. Sure. And so when whenever I go into, whether it's Mount Eden Prison, Paremo Remo, whether it's um, Spring Hill, and I sit down with, with one of our clients, and they say, well, what's a, what's a cultural report? What's a Section 27 report? And the easiest way I can explain it is, is that if you could have um, a chat to the judge before he passes that final sentence, <coughs> or have your words recorded and read by the judge to help him better understand why you've offended, what would you say? And what I found with that sort of approach is that I guess where maybe our reports, maybe, and I can't speak for other report writers, but there's, we have a big emphasis on recording what they say. Now, it's not word for word. Uh, a lot of it's paraphrase, but that's why we have multiple, I guess, interactions or interviews with, um, with our clients. So, for example, I'll sit down with someone maybe two or three times, not just one and done, because when you sit down with a stranger, 
you might not get all the information out that you need. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, we'll go back and then I will go over the report with them that second and third time until they are happy with the report. And then that's what goes to the lawyer. Now, I will say there are particular lawyers that have uh, issues with our reports because they're, they don't present offenders in the best light. Mm. Sure. And the whole point of the report is you want it to be balanced. Mm. You're not making excuses. Culture is not an excuse for committing any crime. That's right. Right? Uh, just because, you know, you're yeah. from a particular culture. When it comes to culture, though, it's not, we're not just talking about ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, we're also yeah. talking about drug culture. Yeah. That's we're right. talking about gang culture. What, have you, what sorts of cultures have you been exposed to? Mm -hmm. So while these reports, I guess, are um, nicknamed cultural reports, again, it's not just about ethnicity. It's not just about tikanga. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. um, it's not just about anganu. Right, yeah. it's about what different cultures, I guess, in that context, they've been exposed to. But does that make sense? Yeah, that it does. Yeah. Yeah. The so uh, there's there's two sides, but mm. I I really want to know how is the veracity with your clients? If you're like, so you're sitting and talking with them, mm -hmm. is there the possibility that, that some of them are, are on to it enough to know that if they give a bit of a sad sob story, yep. that they'll that the judge might be more lenient towards them in that way? Is that a does can that happen? Have they been sexually abused? Is mm -hmm. probably the biggest. Is, yeah. that, is that the most mm -hmm. uh, most likely way for someone to um, elicit some sort of sympathy on the judge? Yeah, and I know I know this because I've also had disclosures to myself as well yeah. from young people, and it's actually. It's not as easy as saying, nah, you're just looking for the sympathy vote. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually nearly illogical yeah, when almost. you've been in the field. So, yeah. But I mean, are there some, Do you, have you ever come across some who are purposely trying to embellish in a purposeful way? I think I have, and yes. I've put that in my report, which is right. why I said, really? which is wow. why we get okay. pushback. Right. Now, for yeah. my sister and I, we've never uh, we've never not got a discount for a report, mm. if that makes sense. Yep. And sure. I think that comes down to our process. Mm. Uh, we were very lucky in that my sister or our mentor is um, Associate Professor Kylie Quince yes. from the Faculty yep. of Law at, yep. uh, at AUT. And a lot of um, what our reports are based on are basically what she, because she's a well-known report writer as well, as well as being all the other things. Um, and with our reports, basically, if you, fo if you follow what's in the legislation, as in you look at those family, whānau, community and cultural and personal factors, if you follow that and get the right information for a judge, mm. that's what the judges want to see. I know that um, there's a lot of comparison between that and pre-sentence reports. Now, I'm very grateful because I guess with our reports, they're kind of the last report in the chain, so to speak, mm. before the sentence. Because usually that pre-sentence report has been done. If there's any psychological reports that need to be done, that's done. And then there's, there's even a sentencing indication. So we're kind of at the back end. So what we can do is utilize all those previous reports mm. to see if it all matches up. And the interesting thing is that sometimes what's said in a pre-sentence report, and I'm not trying to bag pre-sentence reports because they're really good because they give us a, a place to sort of start from, mm. doesn't match up with what the client says, mm -hmm. whether they don't necessarily agree with it. So mm. us sort of being there at the end of the of the chain means that hopefully we get the, the right amount of information. Do I think that people can try and game the system and game the reports to get a discount? It can definitely happen. Mm. Um, if I sense that, I'll put it in my report. Which is why I, I love said. That. I think that's, uh, that's, mm. I mean, that's powerful. Yeah. Well, that's because yeah. uh, if you don't do that, all you're doing again, like what we've sort of talked about before, is that people know how to game the system. They're mm. just trying to get that discount. And again, the discount, whatever the percentage of the discount is, if they're uh, at a place where they can have their sentence under two and a half years, mm. then potential for home detention and all mm. that sort of stuff. Um, I have to say, in my experience, I mean, I've worked with, and I'll say it here, I've worked with child molesters, mm. I've worked with rapists. Um, I've worked a lot of people from that have um, domestic violence, mm. a lot of drugs, methamphetamine, as we know, just ripping through our community, a lot of 501 deportees that have come back and come back from overseas. Um, I have to say that of all of those sort of areas, um, definitely the the family violence and how that sort of manifests later in life, I've seen. Mm. Um, the sexual abuse, not so much. As in, if someone's sexually abused as a child, doesn't mean they're going to be a sexual abuser when they grow up. Mm, right. mm. But they'll be very angry, mm. yeah. which yeah. leads yeah. them into other, other crimes. crimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the grievous yeah. bodily harm, those sorts yeah. of um, those sorts of charges. So so just to jump in there, uh, mm. from your experience, mm. uh, what would you say is one of the more core 
uh, one of the more core causes of why we have uh, so much perhaps antisocial behaviour or you know tragic criminal sort of activity coming from certain groups. Uh, I wouldn't actually say Māori because Māori are ninety seven percent Māori are not in prisons. Uh, even if over half of our people in prisons are Māori or Māori yep. uh, linked. But what would you say is a common? Is, is there a commonality between the different yeah. fatherless homes? Fatherless homes. Yeah, we keep coming back to that, don't keep we? Keep coming back to that. Yeah. Fatherless, fatherless homes. Fatherless, fatherless homes. homes. Mm-hmm. I guess the right. other thing is uh, when we are doing our, and I guess it goes back to the industry as a whole, mm. in terms of, I mean, obviously the um, the tax the, the reports are funded through the ministry, which comes from taxpayers. Mm. So I guess in a way, yeah. I guess we're public servants. Well, <laughs> hopefully, we don't get a wage freeze. <laughs> but. I know that there's a, there's, um, there's a lot of pushback in terms of the amount of money being spent. Mm. And, and here's what I will say. Um, there are people that write these reports for free. Mm. There, and then there's a range right up to, I believe I saw someone charging $6,000. If you're charging $6,000 for a report, crazy. That's ridiculous. Wow. wow. I mean, we don't we wow. charge nowhere near like that, mm. not even a quarter. Mm. Um, but then I guess it brings up the other question is, to be a lawyer, you need a law degree. Mm, to be right. a doctor, you need a medical degree. There's no qualification or um, degree you can get as a cultural report writer. So how do we how do we sort of mm. get value out of what how, how do we differentiate cultural report writers mm. and what they charge? Mm. Sure. I guess for me and my sister, we come from a broken home. Yeah. Uh, we come from a little bit of I guess cultural disconnection and that we sort of spent time away from our fun or for example. We come from a family where we've seen domestic violence, sexual abuse. Um, I've been addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm. Now it's more just donuts. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, abuse, abuse. You know, it's probably more probably worse for you. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is, yeah. when we sit down with the offenders or our mm. clients, the reason why that they, I guess, give us a bit more detail than say someone else. One, because we kind of look like them if we're brown. Um, yeah. But also because we have similar experiences. We're a gang farmer, mm-hmm. so we we have an understanding of that sort of stuff. I know what it's like to live overseas. So when I sit down with my Asian and Middle Eastern African clients, I know what those sort of migrant um, uh, factors can be. And, yeah. can be. Yeah. It's not easy going to a different country, and you know not being able to adjust or be able to um, earn the sort of money that you did say back in wherever you come from. Mm. Um, so again, I guess for us, if we're talking about um, can, how do we justify what people get paid? Well, I guess it, it does come down to more the experience and what they can bring, mm-hmm. um, and not just your lived experience. And I guess in terms of learned experience, I mean, I'm university educated, if that means anything. So at least I can write academically. As I said, my sister is a lawyer, so mm-hmm. she has a, a really good understanding of mm-hmm. sort of law and, and the justice system here. So just coming back to that article of the woman who... Mm-hmm. Um, murdered her baby yes. and got 10, 10 months. I just want to ask you, was that a great cultural writer that was able to bring that sentence down? Because, yeah. you know, just as a public or someone thinking and reading the article, you're thinking, this is crazy. Like 10 years to 10 months at home, mm. you know, that just doesn't, it doesn't compute in my head. So yeah. when I saw cultural and personal factors, yep. That just made me angry. Sure. And I'm just being honest. And so I'm thinking, was that from... It sounds great cultural writer. I would, I would, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want to come back to that. Because I, would, I think what it also highlights is that there are judges within the system that are very open and very partial to these reports. Uh, yes, because, of course, it's, it's actually not you guys. It's, it's actually the judges who make the decision as to whether to discount or not. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. our reports are, yeah, I mean, we, we don't say, please give this guy 25%. Mm. No, we say these are the different factors. Yeah. Is there a, well, we're trying to say if there is, if there is a causal nexus between their offending and what happened to them as children. And then we make, we make recommendations, mm. yeah. as in if we think they should go to prison, go to prison. Mm. I've made that recommendation. And that's why we work with uh, programs like the um, Sa'ili Matangi program. Over in Spring Hill, because mm. that's a bus speaker program. Mm. Right. Samoan, Tongan, Fijian. <laughs> you know, so if someone's going to jail, we think they should go to jail. We say, yeah, but put them in Saili Matangi mm. so that at least he's around if they have that cultural disconnect, I guess mm. is the way to put it. Um, so again, yeah, it's not us that, I guess, give the discount. Mm. It comes down to, but like you said, I think um, how well a report writer can mm. frame. Yeah. That particular yeah. report, which I think is, is dangerous. Mm. Reports need to be mm. balanced. Yeah. If my sister was here, that's what she would say. Mm. They yes. need to be balanced. 
I think that if you look at what it is that you've been saying, I think it's, it's really important for us to be able to understand the significance because uh, I, I find that, um, you know, the issue that, that, that we have with our, with our Maori whanau, uh -huh. who are, are constantly um, kind of like they, we, we're speaking about treating everyone equally, mm. treating everyone fairly, regardless of your race, regardless of what nationality you belong to. Mm -hmm. But apparently they don't like to hear that from us. And so then they attack us. Okay. All of a sudden we become the enemy. But when I listen to you and I, and I, and I hear what it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. it, it really... Um, it really encourages me because that's exactly what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, what, what needs to happen is truth needs to, truth needs to reign. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If a person yeah. is, is, is doing wrong, then he's doing wrong regardless mm -hmm. of what race yeah. the yep. person belongs to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the same issue with the police 10 seven thing oh, that sure. we had brought up mm -hmm. how like yeah. in a sense, it's like, Oh yeah, no, there's too many Brown people that you're doing this to. That's racism. I mean, this is completely wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. let's be honest and truthful. And mm -hmm. that seems to be the, the great aspect of what I hear you're doing, because mm -hmm. like you just said, if you believe that someone needs to go to jail, then I'm going to jail. I also think it brings up a, uh, oh, I hate the idea of standards. because I, as a youth worker, I yeah. don't, I think that there's all different youth workers for all different types of work in, in the mm -hmm. youth field. Yeah. I hate the idea of this, uh, centralized okay. regulatory body for all people youth workers that have to get funded yada yada mm. uh, but it does worry me because i think that you're a great uh, cultural writer in terms of what you've been saying and from what i've listened yeah. and heard from you you'll be more accurate if they need to go to jail sweet they'll go to jail I, I love you know i love the idea of that uh, but it also makes me quite worried about the people who are either doing it free for perhaps ideological reasons right and right. even down to those who are uh, yeah. trying to push a yeah. uh, report i mean man what are they after what you know what are they and so i yeah. think there's definitely a bit of a, uh, a concern in that regard i have to say you've softened my attitude a bit on it i'll be honest as soon as i see uh, uh, any of those cultural reports i think oh, i'm yeah. yeah. um, straight off the gate i'll say yeah. wow these things you know that's a, you know, I think that they'd be taken and perverted, but uh, yeah. you helped me Hope to be a little bit more. Yeah. He, he's actually yeah. brought this up. I don't know if you've seen some of our prior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he actually Woo! brought those things up, so it's very like, good that we have someone who can yeah. speak to it. Yeah, yeah. that's so right. So thank you for 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 sharing, yeah. Yeah, and thank cool. you for being. You know, I, I guess it, do you, would you say that's your faith that that uh, uh, causes you to be able to to mm. approach your um, writing, your cultural mm. reports in the in the in the way that you do. Yeah, that's mm. definitely it's uh, it's my faith in God. That's right. Um, you know, he brought me back to this country to to, to do that. I think. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, it's a it's a ministry for us. My dad used to um, share the gospel in prisons as well. Right. Um, so sure. to sort of follow in nice. his footsteps has yeah. been nice yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, I guess the other, the only other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of, I guess, the industry or the reports themselves is those alternatives to court and to prison. Mm. Because obviously within the New Zealand system of late, we also have the uh, Te Pai Oranga or the yes. uh, community yes. iwi panels that are out there in Papa Kuru right. right. and, and those are really important. And, and obviously they're aimed more at sort of low-level offending. Yes. Um, and obviously... It, <laughs> The one thing I sort of, when I hear that, well, when I when I started learning about that, is the power of the arresting officer. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it depends on the crime. But you know, you have, I guess, as a, as a police officer, you know, you have the potential to to steer someone down that path as opposed mm -hmm. to going through our our judicial system, which, right. as we know, can sort of have problems. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, a, it's an important... Oh, That's God. another big issue well, about actually, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so in the last, uh, when we were all campaigning and stuff like that, one of the brothers, uh, you know, one of the boys over in West Auckland, mm. uh, he, someone was sl slash up damaging signs. It ended yeah. up being something like $7,000 damage every right. week. Oh, yeah. now, now, one of the guys staked it out and yeah. found the guy. Oh, nice. And he was slashing up. That guy ended up giving the our, our brother a slash massive him. slash across oh, wow. the forearm. Mm. You know, it still was spitting tax. Ah, you stole our land, stole our land, mm. oh, right. you know, yeah. um, uh, and all this sort of stuff. The, the cops came and grabbed him, mm. but then they gave him that ultimate justice. Okay. And this guy was unrepentant the entire way. No remorse. Yeah, no remorse. Didn't care. And basically, everyone else's fault, everyone else's blame. Uh, but you should know, see where he is now if yeah. he's found himself into trouble again. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, and so I, I, that's where I have a bit of a, 
I think the idea is where it can go. If you're Balangi, is there a it's open. Justice justice so it's open for you know? So the, that, that reminds open. me of the first years of Fano Water. Mm. When the first years of when, when Fano Water was being piloted, I loved it. Yeah. Because I could use it for my clients who were Balangi and also the ones who were, who were Pacific as well. Yeah. Right. Now, of course, it's starting to get tied up, and now it's becoming a little bit more, unfortunately, more Maori based, as in sure. it's starting to exclude. Yeah, specifically. So, so can I can I ask you just point blank? Have you seen any white privilege in, in your, your line of work? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Straight to it. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, I guess as someone that has white privilege, yeah. you know, Palangi privilege or Pākehā privilege, yeah. um, the Palangi or uh, Pākehā clients that I've had, um, the interesting thing about them is the ones that I've had when I think about them. They've grown up in the same areas, Otara, South Auckland, or if I'm talking here, mm -hmm. in the same areas right. as all the Māori and Pacificas. And yeah. a lot of them have followed down the same path, so it's, and a lot of them broken homes. Mm -hmm. right. Broken homes. You know, and they've gone into gangs, and they've right. gone into to culture early. So um, I can't, I guess, I mean, we don't deal in um, white-collar crime, I guess. I mean, I haven't sort of had any mm. fraudulent case or anything like that. Actually, no, I lied. I did. Um, but that was... Um, not a balling. Nothing around elections. Uh, anyway, but, uh, oh, we should do no. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. But, uh, but I guess, again, within, uh, if our judicial system is supposed to benefit Balangi or Pākehā people more, mm -hmm. uh, in, in that sort of sense, I mean, I guess it happens maybe on white collar crime. But I think when it comes to blue collar crime or our, our Balangi and uh, Pakia um, brothers and sisters, they seem to have the same. They get so, the same. So when it's a white collar crime, it can be like you just mentioned just now. It was not a white person that, mm. right? Yeah. It was a. So yeah, it does. It a, yeah. So what you're really talking about is different socioeconomic. Different socioeconomic. Levels. Yeah. Different yeah. levels of privilege. Yeah. Economic privilege. Yeah. 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 And how, how it's not right. what sort of lawyers you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's all. And even I think I think economic privilege does exist. You know, okay. Schooling, resources, yeah. extracurricular activities, mm. all, all across the board. I think definitely that's that's in there. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, look, I, I know we're we're nearly we're actually. We've been talking for so long. We've gone we over. Sorry. Our time. No, it's fine. But, but I actually did want to bring up, yeah. and I wanted all of us to actually be able to discuss something that's uh, uh, really important, uh, is, of course, the, the Gaza, West Bank, yeah. Israel situation. Uh, people being killed on both sides. Mm -hmm. The media in New Zealand has been has obviously taken a stance very directly. Mm -hmm. We've had the uh, Greens actually doing the river to the sea, the anti-Semitic calling yeah. for yep. uh, uh, the Israel. Israeli to be. Uh, I saw a picture of uh, Chloe Swarbrick. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I want to put that out for all of us to yeah. to see what what do we think, what's going on there. Mm. Well, when I saw the actual uh, map of how small Israel was and the land that belonged to the Palestines, it, it just gave perspective to actually there's a little tiny piece of land mm -hmm. that... Oh, you the Arabs? Yes. <laughs> belonging to, you know, Israel is actually really little. Mm, sure. But it's very significant. Mm. And we know from this is that Hamas was the ones that started the firing. Mm -hmm. And so I have never known a country to give warning to mm -hmm. them to say, this is what we're going to do. You need to, mm -hmm. you know, leave the building, leave the building, because that's where we're going to. And then it was reported, like the reports came back, you know, they're, they're firing on civilians. So, yeah. you know, we've got our media who are just so <laughs> biased as Shocking. to how this is. It's so shocking that I'm just like, actually, we should condemn. And then we've got our Prime Minister who didn't oh, no, didn't she's want to condemn it. No, of course not. She didn't. She's gapped out of it. Yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, what, where do we stand? How do we, where do we stand as a country? Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a saying, it says, um, a man with experience is never at the mercy of a man with theory. And so what I wanted to say is that there's so many people who are out there protesting. Mm. They have never stepped foot into Israel. Mm. Yeah. They have never stepped foot into Israel. As mm. someone who's been to Israel twice, mm. Mm. I've experienced what life is like in Israel. I've seen what the people, uh, what the, um, uh, people go through on a daily basis over there. Yep. And I can say without a doubt 
There is no discrimination. Diversity. There is none of that that yeah, I see diversity. taking place in Israel. In fact, I, yeah. I even talked to some of the Arab people. Mm -hmm. I stayed in uh, one of uh, my second visit to Israel. I stayed in the Muslim uh, part of Israel, um, uh, Jerusalem, just mm -hmm. outside of the, the, the old city. Yeah. And, you know, as I was saying, there, you can see that they, they thrive because of, uh, of living in Israel, whereas the stories that come out of the areas where, you know, these Hamas and all those guys, the Gaza Strip and whatnot, they, these people are, 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 they have no electricity, have no water. Mm. And then they, what they do is they turn around, uh, you know, the, the people outside, they blame the, the nation of Israel for all that, but they're getting millions of dollars. I mean, just before these missiles started shooting up, out uh, that, uh, the, the thing that just took place just recently, uh, the United States, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, just gave somewhere uh, over 300 or something like that million dollars mm -hmm. to the Palestinians. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty obvious where their money's going. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And it's not going to helping the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I guess the big thing when I noticed the reporting is obviously the numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching the media and they're saying, you know, 100 um, Palestinians have been killed here and only 10 Israelis. You also have to remember that Israel have the Iron Dome, mm. which is their anti-aircraft, uh, anti-missile defense yes. system, which basically means even though probably Hamas has fired over more rockets, yes. they've been intercepted. When I guess they've retaliated and sort of tried to target those installations that are firing them, Hamas aren't dumb, they're putting them in civilian areas. Yeah. That's right. So obviously when yeah. if you're going to be firing shields. human shields. Mm. So what does that tell you about yeah. you know, how much they care about how much they care about their yeah. own care about people. Their yeah. people? It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah. care about their own people. So crazy. Yeah. And I guess the only other thing is, you know, I saw a, a story in the news last night about the uh, Wellington Phoenix Israeli player. Yes. And it was obviously, yes, you know, yes, getting yes, his flag yes, yes. out and being patriotic yep. and yeah. they're sort of painting him and, oh, is he going to get reprimanded? And then, you know, they're sort of comparing him to the, the Palestinian players that play over in the UK. And like, oh, look at these heroes. Mm. Well, at the end of the day, you know, I think we should be able to protest. Now, sport's a bit of a, a tricky one, but yeah. at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. give yep. them the, the right sort of coverage. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's quite interesting too because I, I know that, that massive picture, uh, you had Chloe, Ricardo Menendez and... Uh, Gories, yeah. and, and you couldn't help but think, you know, if Ricardo and Chloe went over to the yeah. West Bank, to Gaza, yeah. you know, they they won't quite find the yeah, wonderful acceptance be, of yeah. their rainbow That's right. identity. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. it, it'll be quite lethal what they, they find. So, yeah, yeah. so we're not sure exactly what you're trying to say. And, and so, you know, if you are trying to virtue signal, I, I find it fascinating that you guys will always try to virtue signal mm. on the Israeli side of the border. Mm. You'll always try to protest <laughs> on the Israeli side of the border. Because you're safe. Because you're yeah, safe. You know full well that you'll be yeah. safe. Even Marwa Davidson, yes. when she protested, she was going, she was protesting against the Israeli uh, blockade. She knew full well that she was mm. going to be okay. This this yeah. kind of reminds me of those hitchhikers who had had tried to go into like uh, the Middle East and try to show oh. how safe uh, it yeah, was. Yeah, sure. And then, and then ooh, all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they very found them. And, yeah, yeah, very sad, very tragic. Yeah. Okay, well, looks like we've come to the end of our time. And as is our want, we've got to give it up to the big boss upstairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, tonight we would love for Jack to send us off in Karagia. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let us pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you so much again for this time that we've got to fellowship this evening. Lord, we thank you that we can come to a place and a space and share our views and share our opinions, but know that you are at the uh, the core of the you are at the core of our lives mm. and that our views are all influenced by you. Lord, on all that we do, we pray that we will be able to follow your purpose and um, that we'll be able to bring glory to you in all our actions. Father God, I ask you to pray over my friends here, uh, Babali, uh, Lau, and, um, and Elliot. Pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them and their families. Their program, Talano Sao, as it continues to bring truth um, to, to our audiences, pray nothing but uh, blessings upon them. Mm. So again, Lord, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.